What you looking at? The moon. Oh, cool. You know, a lot of astronomers don't bring their scopes out when the moon is bright, like at half moon or full moon. The brightness of the moon makes it very hard to see distant objects. Dark skies are always the best. Then they are really missing out on seeing really cool things on the moon. Some of these craters are awesome. You can follow ridge lines, see mountains and valleys. There is a lot to explore on the moon. Let me see. Let me see. <coughs> Let's Explore Astronomy is sponsored in part by... Distinctly Yukon. The Westmark Whitehorse Hotel and Conference Center is the Yukon's premier lodging facility. Make your reservations today at westmarkhotels.com. Westmark Hotels, with nine unique locations throughout Alaska and the Yukon. Just because the moon is out, and it is bright does not mean that you have to put your scope away. Since the moon is so close to us, it is the best way to see and explore another world close up. The first thing you get is a moon filter. They are small and attach right to your eyepiece. You can buy them separate or in a set of telescope filters. Since the moon is so bright, if you do not use a filter, it may be too bright for your eyes. A moon filter or a neutral density filter will reduce the glare and brightness and allow you to see the details on the moon with great clarity and contrast. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Before the Apollo astronauts went to the moon, we did not really know much about it. Telescopes gave us close-up views of it, and we knew it was rocky, but what was it really like on the surface? I was strolling on the moon one day in a merry, merry, merry month of December. Now, May. May. May is the month. May, that's year. right. <laughs> May is the year of the month. In the late 1800s, science fiction writers Jules Verne and H.G. Wells started writing fantastic stories. Jules Verne wrote of a capsule with three men on board being blasted to the moon by a giant cannon from Florida and landing in the Pacific Ocean. Sound familiar? H.G. Wells envisioned that creatures can live underground on the moon, and that's why we cannot see them in telescopes. Hollywood continued with science fiction stories about the moon. Then, in the 1960s, science fiction met science fact. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. It may seem surprising to us today, or maybe even silly, but in 1960 we knew little of the moon. What kind of spacesuit was needed for the astronauts to breathe, and to also protect them from harmful radiation? Can we live and work when the gravity is only one-sixth that Earth? Will we be able to walk? How deep is the moon dust? Will the astronauts sink into it? These are serious questions in 1960. So we launched probes. In 1966, Luna 9, launched by the Soviet Union, became the first probe to safely land on the moon. From 1966 to 1968, the United States landed five surveyor probes on the moon. Years later, Apollo 12 astronauts landed near where Surveyor 3 had landed and they went to visit it. From early rocket testing at White Sands in New Mexico, through manned Mercury and Gemini flights, we tested the rockets and how man could work in space, all leading up to Apollo 11 in 1969. So what can we see on the moon, and what have we learned? When the moon and Earth were formed about four and a half billion years ago, there was a lot of debris in space, so both the moon and Earth were bombarded by meteorites. About 3.8 billion years ago, the bombardment ended as the space cleared. On the Earth, we have an atmosphere which causes rain and weather. Over billions of years, the craters on Earth all but disappeared by the hand of Mother Nature. But on the Moon, there was no weather, and the craters remain today. A window into not only the Moon's past, but the Earth as well. We also see dark areas and light areas on the Moon. The dark regions we see are called maria. These are the lowlands of the moon. Some maria are craters caused by impacts of meteorites. 
Others were caused by early volcanoes. Two types of rock are found here, breccia and balsat. Breccia indicates it was caused by an impact. Balsat, however, indicates volcanic activity. The balsat on the moon is consistent with volcanic lava on Earth. Volcanoes on the moon? Yes. Not only did we find balsat, the volcanic lava, but Apollo 15 at Hadley Rill confirmed that the rills were lava tubes, just like the lava tubes formed by volcanoes on Earth. On the moon, the lava oozed out onto the surface through cracks instead of being blasted out at tops of mountains. The lava stopped oozing about 800 million years ago. And if finding the lava wasn't cool enough, the astronauts found something else quite amazing. Oh, hey! There is orange soil! Well, don't move it till I see it. It's all over! Orange! Don't move it till I see it. I've stirred it up with my feet. Hey, it is! I can see it from here! It's orange! When analyzed, it turned out to be glass. Glass? Yep, glass. When you heat sand to high temperatures over 3,000 degrees, it melts and becomes a molten liquid. When it cools, you get glass. That is how they make glassware in figurines. But on the moon there are no glass making factories, Herc. No, there aren't. But you have two natural sources of 3,000 degrees or more. When a meteorite hits, it generates that kind of heat, and volcanic lava is also over that temperature. And the lunar dust is just like sand. So that is how you get glass on the moon. That is what we find in the lowlands, or the dark areas of the moon. But what about the light areas? They are the highlands, or the terra. The moon dust, which we call regolith, is lighter here because chemically it has more aluminum in it than the regolith in the maria. Also, notice that the mountains and hills on the moon are all smooth instead of having sheer cliff faces. But, there is no wind or rain on the moon. So how did the mountains get worn down like that? The answer is micrometeorites. Big meteorites no longer bombard the moon, but micrometeorites still do, and billions of years of bombardment have worn down on the mountains to make them smooth. Ever see a shooting star? Or watch the meteor shower? Micrometeorites bomb the earth also, but they are so small that they burn up in the atmosphere. Another strange phenomenon are the mascons. The gravity of the moon is not the same everywhere. Early probes were going off course because of it. It was discovered that the gravity in the craters greater than 200 kilometers have a higher gravity. The red in this photo are the high gravity areas. They were formed by massive asteroid impacts billions of years ago. The impacts changed the density of the surface, creating these gravity fields. The moon is fun to look at. Try and figure out what craters are from impact and what are from lava. Try to follow the lava tube or mountain ranges. How about we find where the Apollo astronauts landed, and the early U.S. and Soviet space probes and rovers? You can't see the spacecraft left on the moon with telescopes from Earth, but you can find the location. It makes a fun hunt and find game. Recently, a Japanese spacecraft took HD photos from lunar orbit and did see the Apollo landers and the tracks made by the lunar rovers. Does the moon have a name? Luna. Luna? That's a pretty name. What does it mean? It is Latin and means the moon. The moon? It means the moon? That's dumb. It was actually named after the Roman goddess of the moon, Luna. Oh, okay. I like that. You're so pretty, Luna. <laughs> Check out our other episodes in the Let's Explore Astronomy series at www.tedcookproductions.com slash LEA. You will find all kinds of cool astronomy topics there. <laughs> Hey, give a shout out to our sponsors, without whom we would not be here. Visit their websites and partake of their services and products. A big thank you to the Yukon Department of Tourism and Culture and Westmark Hotels, Westmark Whitehorse.